Welcome back to the Triple Crown Vidcast brought to you by Twinspires.com. My name is Peter Thomas Fornital and I'm here this week to talk about the Florida Derby from Gulfstream Park. First thing we're going to look at here is the outside horse number 8 Flashpoint. Expected by uh, the world pretty much to make the lead here. But he has a little incident shortly after the start as we're about to see. He uh, is clean on the break but then whoa look at this. He veers outward never makes it to the front, gets fanned wide, and that's all you uh, see from him, really, for the day. Then I want you to look back here at the horse in last, out of touch with the field, rarely where you want to be, especially at Gulfstream. In fact, he just went out of the picture. That's your eventual winner dialed in. Then I want to show you the number one, Soldat. Soldat had had easy trips his last two. They rate him today, and as you can see from his high head carriage and the way he's shying a little bit here, doesn't really like being raided and definitely does not like the dirt kicked in his face. Um, that was pretty much it for him on the day. Now let's look back up front since our winner isn't even in the picture yet. We have a, a long shot who runs a huge race on the lead. This is Shackelford. And then in second place we have To Honor and Serve. So promising as a two-year-old and it sure seems at this point after he runs third here beating six lengths again that he just didn't go on as a three-year-old and is not going to be a factor the rest of the way. Though he could be one of these horses who just hates Florida and likes Kentucky and New York and maybe could surprise us and have an impact later in the season. But hard to make a cogent case for him for the Kentucky Derby at this point. Um, these two end up second and third and nobody else in the race makes a, a meaningful move except for our eventual winner dialed in. Dialed in makes just a visually incredible move at least as far as this handicapper is concerned. And uh, You'll, you'll see him here coming up on the outside. Again, barely wasn't, any, wasn't even in the picture after six furlongs. Ends up running these all down and winning. Um, many people watching this race on the day thought that the track was speed biased. Even trainer Nick Zito made such a comment uh, in his post-race remarks. It turns out, according to the data I use from RacingFlow.com, that it was a fair track, not a biased track. But still, I'm inclined to upgrade this, upgrade this effort of dialed ins. Just based on how far back he really was, how determined he was to run down the winner. I know it was a 60 to 1 shot, and some people are going to crab the form because of that. But I'm not too worried about that. I think what we have here is a serious threat to win it all. A horse with a great pedigree for distance, runs like he'll appreciate more distance, and uh, somebody who, with only four races, has license to step up in the Kentucky Derby and uh, make us a little bit of money. So some have joked that Uncle Mo has nothing to worry about uh, based on this race. I'm not so sure that's the case. I I'm very happy with the dialed in's performance and expect him to run a very big race in the Kentucky Derby. Well, that's all from where I sit for this week. If you'd like, you can follow me on Twitter at, at @loomsboldly or check back during the week for racing news and analysis at blog.twinspires.com. I hope to see you next week.